the way I feel about you. Hey, and there ain't no doubt about it. I'm in love the way I feel about you. That's my shit. How old was I? 1981. I don't remember, but I love that song. Man, I love Evelyn Champagne King. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Today's look would be this Hilda lippy. Oh, and if you are not into the Hilda lip, I'm sure there are other accessories there that will suit you just fine. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube and for a small monthly fee of $5. You babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's talk about Evelyn, Champagne King. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I okay. know this. I am the auntie of a special needs nephew. My baby has um, mild to moderate cerebral palsy, okay? And uh, the reason why I chose Evelyn Champagne King today to talk about was because Evelyn Champagne King is also or was also a special needs mommy. If you guys do not know, it is a man, it's like a club that only the strong survive in. Okay. And I don't feel like enough celebrities talk about their, uh, journey as being a special needs parent. Evelyn Champagne King was born July 1st, 1960. Cancer, mother of the universe. Now, let me tell you what's so special about Miss Evelyn Champagne King outside of the fact that she is a special needs mother, okay? You guys who have been following me for a while, you all know that uh, I am a music person. Okay, the first genre of music that I love would be go-go because I am from Washington, D.C., born and raised, proud, uptown girl, okay? Second, and uh, see, I, I can't really tell. It's like up and down for me. So I would say tied for second would be disco and funk. And who embodies the two more than Miss Evelyn Champagne King? So picture it. It's 1976 in International Recording Studios, okay? We got a dude named T-Life there working with another artist, okay? He steps out into the hallway and hears this big, powerful voice coming from the restroom area. The hell is going on? Is somebody taking a dump and singing? Mm, I don't know, but whoever it is, it's big, it's powerful, it's beautiful, it's moving, okay? The person is singing Sammy Cookies. We do, um, what is that, uh, nicknames around here, don't take it personal, because I love me some Sammy Cookie, okay? If I was born back then, I'd be one of them women throwing my underwears up on the stage, too. I don't speak about anybody that I don't respect. Even the thick thighs diddy, I think he the devil, but I got mad respect for his work ethic, okay? Even though he might be stealing from some of you people. Some of you people is homeless and thick thighs diddy is richy. He is richy rich. You hear me? And his children. 
Them motherfuckers gonna be richy rich forever. I, oh, I can't wait till he kick the bucket so them kids can write a story. I'm telling you, that thing gonna be like mommy so did. Because he doesn't want to startle whoever it is that's singing the song, you know, he tiptoes around the corner. When he get there, he see this little girl about 14, 15 years old that look like she don't even weigh 75 cents. When he asked the little girl, uh, yeah, do you know who was singing that song? Now, Evelyn Champagne King is like, uh, am I going to get in trouble? So she kind of, you know, like, uh, I don't know if I should answer him. I don't know if I should say it was me because I don't know where he's coming from. So at the time, she's 15 years old working at International Records, okay? Her mother works as a receptionist there and her father is maintenance. Her parents are Erica and John McCain. They had a large family. Eight children moved from the Bronx to Philly. Her father moonlighted as a guitar man working part-time at the Apollo. All of the kings were talented but none of the kings sang like bubbles. The reason why she's at the recording studio, cleaning the bathrooms, singing, is because she's 15 years old, she's in high school, but was working part-time so that she could earn extra money. She life got permission from her parents to work with young bubbles. You better get permission. She ain't homeless. She got a whole family back there, okay? That's how some of them predators do, though. They see y'all, they be like, oh, this bitch lost and turned out. Let me grab her, okay, and exploit her. Luckily, Evelyn Champagne King had a supportive, strong family behind her. So T-Life believes in bubbles, okay? So what he did was uh, take a tape that they had worked on together, Bubbles and Tea Life, to the actual record company that she was cleaning up for. They said, answer no. Ding, no, we not impressed. Okay, Tea Life said, okay, you dummies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it over there to RCA. The tape that Tea Life and Evelyn Champagne King created sat in a drawer for a whole year until this dude found it. His name was Warren Schatz. He took interest. He said yes immediately after hearing the tape, after it was sitting in a drawer for a whole year, and said, bring Bubbles to me. So by the time she was 16 years old, one year later, she had a record deal. Wait, let's get to the name, Evelyn Champagne King, all right? I'm not calling her Bubbles to be funny, all right? That is really her nickname. The reason why her name is Evelyn Champagne King was because her mother was like, no, you won't have my baby coming to the stage with some stripper name, Bubbles. Well, Bubbles is a stripper name? The mother was like, I know, let's name her something elegant, Champagne, okay? I get it, but the girl's 15, 16 years old. She can't drink no damn champagne, but okay, let's move forward. Now, the first single was Shame. Y'all, I promise you, I promise you, okay? Oh, y'all, these Leona bangles are um, over there on the site also, okay? I think we only got two bundles left, right? But anyway, when I first heard Shame, even though I think I was like six years old at the time, I promise you, I would never think that it was a 16-year-old girl singing that song, Shame to me. Evelyn Champagne King reminds me of like Johnny Gill. I know you're like, Nay, why are you talking about Johnny Gill? I'm talking about Johnny Gill because Johnny Gill was like 12, 13 years old, sounded like a grown ass man and had his fair share of vagina, okay, in the universe, all right? Johnny Gill sounded just the way he sounds right now at like seven. And Shane was okay. released in 1978, okay? And it hit the top 10 in R&B and pop, okay? Do you know how powerful that is? Do you know all the record people, they want crossover success? And then here you go, you got this little girl, 1978, okay? So she like 17 now, okay? She got this hit song on pop and R&B at 17. Shame was a cranker. Uh, another piece of information about the song Shame was that Shame ended up on the album by happenstance. Okay, fuck it, here go the song, just put it on there, let's see how it works. 
and it worked. Now, Bubbles is now a disco diva, okay? I hate how people shiz on disco. I mean, I don't care if they say it's shallow and it doesn't uh, garner much effort in their creation. I don't give a fuck. The music got a funky beat and I can dance to it, okay? And the dude T Life said, say what you want to. I ain't never created a disco hit that wasn't a banger. He told you. Her next album, Music Box, also went gold, but disco was dying. Ooh, y'all, ooh, I'm sorry. Sometimes my videos are interactive. Can y'all please tell me some of y'all disco favorites that you don't understand why they weren't able to cross over? Like, I don't get it. I don't get it because like people like uh, Sky and She. So the third album that she made with T-Life went plastic, okay? Plastic spoon, all right? Because no, she's a disco queen, but disco is falling off. Despite Bubbles record sales plummeting, she's still performing and thriving on the road, okay? Now, you know, I hate to say that, but you, ooh, once them people fall off, oh my God, and then she's 17 years old. You mean to tell me I'm 17, 18, 19 years old, and I done fell the hell off? How is that possible? Even as a YouTuber, when my numbers don't look like what they supposed to look like, I be like, I don't wanna talk to nobody. Leave me the fuck alone, okay? Just give me my nighttime medicine so I can go to sleep. She's on her third album. The first one was successful. The second one, meh. And the third one is, uh, okay? But she's thriving on tour. That's how them people make their money when they are unable to continue producing hits. They have to go on tour. I don't wanna tour the world the rest of my damn life like the new edition, okay? Or the Lil Wayne, all right? Sure, Lil Wayne is going half crazy. This nigga is on tour singing half crazy. He need to retire, but he can't. Initially, Young Bubbles would turn around with her back to the audience and sing to the band, okay? Until she got comfortable and understood how powerful she was. Bubbles said that she was traveling six months out of the year. It was grueling for her, and she still wanted to be a kid. Fortunately, her parents were with her on the road. Good job, you know? So when you got your parents on the road with you, a lot of the BS... That happens to young people when they're on the road and their parents don't travel with them. Didn't happen with Evelyn Champagne King. Now, she might have crept in the other room, you know, and hunched on people. Maybe. I don't know. But when you're a young person and you hire a chaperone that ain't shiz, then who knows what's going to happen to that child. And like I told you earlier, her parents didn't play that. Her parents were very supportive to her. Let me back in off of what I just said, okay? Evelyn King, like Stacey Lattisaw, loved the accolades of uh, being a performer, but it was hard work, and she wanted to be a young person with her friends, okay? Show business is definitely sacrifice, okay? And luckily, because like I said previously, her parents were very supportive, her mother told her, whenever you're ready to stop, baby, we can stop. <laughs> what? We can stop. That's what I like. And if it was me, and when I know that I got my mother in my corner, I'm going to keep pushing. It's one thing for your mother to be like, uh-uh. You can't stop, girl, because this is a new bands that I want. You got to keep pushing, keep pushing. You know, when you have a parent that is with you, seeing you, loving you enough not to like, let the industry swallow you up, that pushes you further. You know, because some of these parents ain't shit. Like the Britney Spears pappy. Now, T-Life okay. says to her, okay, so this disco thing ain't working no more. It's time for a change. As a result, RCA hooked Evelyn Champagne King up with Kashif. Oh, my goodness, that damn Kashif was a bad mother. Despite her poor record sales, RCA still believed in her. Okay, they just didn't throw her away. They saw her as an asset. Okay, she's not with the right producer anymore. You know, not that T-Life wasn't a good producer, but I mean, this goat was dead, dead by now, you know. 
Now, cause she is there. In 1981, the way I feel about you. Hey, and there ain't no doubt about it. I'm in love. The way I feel about you. That's my shit. How old was I in 1981? I don't remember, but I love that song. Man, I love Evelyn Champagne Kiss. The song okay. with number one in R&B. The song also launched Kashif into a mega songwriter and producer position, okay? The way I feel about you, oh, and there ain't no doubt about it, I'm in love. Kashif and Evelyn Champagne King work together again for her next album. Get loose. Make it come all the way down. Oh my God, now that I am a grown woman, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, as a child, I had no idea what I was singing. Baby, you make my love come down. Ooh, ooh, nasty, nasty. And, oh my gosh. So anyway, they showed her on Soul Train. Bet you she don't love you. Hey, dun dun. Gonna like you know I love you. Now the offers poured in for Kashif, and he had to take some of the bigger gigs. It was their last collab. Now she with Leon Silvers, okay? Leon Silvers is working with the Shalimar, mm -hmm, okay? Now he produced the album Face to Face for Evelyn Champagne King. Her brother said that album wasn't good. Leon Silver said, my bad, boy, my bad. There was a transition in the music industry. There was an influx of new artists. They referred to Cindy Lauper, Janet Jackson, Madonna, Whitney Houston, and Evelyn Bubbles wasn't fitting in. By the mid 80s, again, her albums were not charting, okay? But she continues to be a live performer, okay? Bra, man, Look, y'all got to do something. Y'all got to do something. Y'all got to get a better retirement plan than, you know, touring, man. That touring put a toll on you. But I've seen her, some of her clips of her turn. Oh, she gets down. I have, that's on my bucket list. Now, while on tour, okay, she met a ninja. Not the right one, okay, but, you know, a year later, she pregnant by the dude, okay? That nigga disappeared, all right? So that's another thing that makes her very, very special, it's hard <laughs> to be a special needs mom and the dad stays around because you know them niggas can't handle the pressure. You know them niggas what? can't handle what we handle. You know that. And I ain't a mail basher. What I am is a realist. And we know damn well that you are not going to find single special needs fathers the way that you see single special needs mothers. Why? Because they can't handle the pressure. I said it. What you going to do? What you gonna do? Eight months pregnant, returning from a tour in Germany, she went into labor. It was a C-section. The baby had severe brain damage. She was given the option. Her and her mother stayed with the baby for seven months in the hospital. Her brother, Johnny King, said that the baby couldn't live without uh, assistance of a machine. Jania Champagne King lived for two years. It was devastating for Evelyn. You have to keep going. So because um, Evelyn Champagne King was a special needs mom and lost her baby, oh my God, you know, I think that sets her apart from the rest of us who live with our special needs baby. Because, you know, creating love for something so tender and so innocent, um, and then losing it? After nine albums with RCA, she signed to EMI with high hopes. So in 1988, with the help of Leon Silvers, she produced a number three hit, Kisses Don't Lie. Okay? She produced two more top ten hits that year, but after the passing of her daughter, she needed to get her own life together. Of course. Special needs parents, we're different. We move different. We have a different energy about us. We're separated from the rest of you people. You know, not saying that, you know, you're not good mothers just because you don't have special needs children, but we're a different kind of breed. So in 1989, she said that she needed a dramatic change. She moved 
to California. She lived in a small apartment in Studio City and fell in love. Her husband, Mr. Freddie Fox, said that he saw a woman that just kept looking at him and she got his attention with her legs. You know, she looking at him, ooh, ooh. gotcha, bitch. Bubbles said that he was very handsome, very shy, and he had a jerry curl and it was cute. Mm-hmm. MC Hammer pants and skinny. It was fate. She is very happy with her husband. At the time of that unsung episode, she is so happy and so in love. They married in 1990 and he became her musical partner, her role manager and or director. The next album, The Girl Next Door, failed to chart. Her record label sent her a letter releasing her. In 1995, I'll Keep the Light On was released and she's still on the road. In 1997, her mom lost her struggle with breast cancer. They chose to tell her when she got home. She admitted that she was very, very emotional. A few months later, her father passed from diabetes. Then her brother passed the same year. Despite the tragedy, she continues to tour and thrive. She says, that touring is what keeps her happy. You deserve it, baby. You deserve all the liberties of life. Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down, my naysayers, my patron loves you, babies. Have a good one.